I'm Eric Pratt from US Broadcast, and thanks for joining us today on our pre-NAB webinar. We'll be covering what we'll be showing at NAB. This is actually our NAB booth, and we'll be going over the workflow of the booth today, how everything is plugged together. But first, I'd like to share a few um, product announcements because we've got some products that we're going to be launching between now and um, now in NAB, and I'm just going to share my screen with you to give you a little bit of coverage over those new products that we'll be trying to get off the ground between now and NAB and showing at NAB. So let me share my screen. Okay, so we have a new PTZ camera. Uh, PTZ Cam has a 4K NDI PTZ camera with a 1 over 2.5 inch sensor. Uh, it's an NDI camera and we'll be using it today. Uh, you can actually see a little bit of it in the upper right hand corner. Uh, it's mounted at kind of the top corner of our booth. And the reason for that is, is that it's got an excellent image quality and we're really happy to show it off. It comes in at a fairly uh, aggressive price point of $24.95 and it's PoE powered. Switchblade Systems has a new portable. Uh, this is Switchblade Zephyr. And the really interesting thing about this is that it has an integrated control surface and uh, analog audio, and it is available in four or eight um, input configurations and comes in at a pretty aggressive $69.95. This is a kind of a groundbreaking price in the portable uh, department. The Turbo, it's sort of big brother, uh, comes in at uh, 10K and upwards to 16. We'll go over the comparison of the two product uh, families coming up here shortly. Um, we have a whole portfolio of the, the Switchblade uh, product line. Behind me, when we get back to my video, you will see um, our Sansi LED wall. And they are available in 0.9 to 4 millimeter configurations. And our particular um, aspect on carrying these is for virtual production. And when we, get, when we get to that, I'll be showing you how we are actually using this to do virtual production in a replacement of something like a green screen. So an LED wall, I don't know how many of you saw um, the Mandalorian, but the bulk of that show was shot on an LED wall and that allowed them to do a kind of virtual production at a much lower cost and there's certain advantages to lead wall or uh, virtual production. Uh, we carry the whole Sansi line so we don't just do virtual production. If you need a high, uh, a very small um, LED distance for doing over the shoulder for a um, news studio or just regular uh, large-scale LED walls for house of worship. We carry the entire line and there are both indoor and outdoor options. Axymetry is 3D virtual set software and Axymetry is a company uh, based out of Hungary which integrates with Unreal Engine and we are offering them as a turnkey solution with hardware based on the Switchblade platform. And we'll be showing uh, a little bit of that in action today in conjunction with the LED wall and vMix uh, and the whole uh, virtual production solution workflow. HTT Matrix 2.0 is an automation software capable of communicating with PTZ cameras and vMix. It comes free with Switchblade, but it is also available independently on its own for creating an automation workflow for your live production. For example, let's say you don't want to come in at Sunday at 10 a.m. To, to do that one stream for your house of worship, or you need to start a conference every day at 9 a.m. This is capable of being programmed to send multiple commands simultaneously to any HTTP compatible uh, API device, which includes PTZ cameras, vMix, and many more things like encoders. So we can build an entire automated workflow around HTTP matrix, and it's another one of the value adds that Switchblade offers by being included with it. Um, it's great for uh, touch screens or just running in an automated fashion. Which brings us to the next part. If you want to do automation, Mark Roberts Motion Control has a product called Polymotion Chat. And Polymotion Chat, which I will show you uh, in the not too distant future on this webinar, 
is a PC program which can take in SDI or NDI sources, analyze them, and send commands to your PTZ camera to automate that production. So in combination um, with HTTP Matrix and Switchblade, we're offering this as a turnkey with Switchblade systems. So for example, the 1U rack uh, positioned here and the Bolin cameras or the PTZ cam cameras to automate that live production workflow. So hypothetically, you could have a lecture every day at nine and the camera will just follow the talent around and HTTP matrix will send vMix a streaming command. So the person walks on stage at 9 a.m., the camera follows them around and they're automatically streamed to your RTMP destination making for a really powerful turnkey workflow. Scarhoy has announced a new product called Blue Pill, and Blue Pill is a uh, small blue pill-shaped product from, from Scarhoy that uh, <clears throat> it is capable of communicating with multiple controllers simultaneously. Previously, every Scarhoy controller has a little computer in it running uh, what they call their Unisketch platform. And that's how you program the Scarhoy controllers to send commands to vMix or ATEMs or PTZ cameras. And it's a, a little tiny computer. And what Blue Pill is, is it's a slightly larger computer that allows more tasks to be accomplished. And it's not just a larger Scarhoy computer, it's a whole architecture for melding multiple control surfaces together, like the, um, like the mega panel, uh, which we have behind us. And uh, it also allows for things like shading a red using their RCP. So while some products will continue to have Unisketch integrated into them and can be controlled by an independent blue pill, other products are getting their own dedicated blue pill version like the RCP for directly controlling um, Red's cameras uh, as just one of many examples coming up and that list is going to, to grow and expand um, moving forward. And this is our workflow chart. So this is my favorite because this kind of covers the entire booth and how it's wired together. We have the Scarhoy controllers in the lower left and we have a Bolin camera, which is aimed at the Sansi LED wall, which is powered by Eximetry. And then we have uh, Densitron automation, which we'll get to a little bit later. We have Axel um, XTV playout and DLG running on the 1U. And all of this is being connected by a PoE Texas 16-port uh, PoE Plus router. And it's all feeding into the LPU3, which is Switchblade's flagship product running vMix. So I'm going to hop out of um, my sharing and kind of explain a little bit of what, uh, what we just went over, because there's, there's a lot there. So to begin with, um, as I mentioned, we've got the Scarhoy controller here, and that's what I'm using to run my live show. So I can come through here and I can actually use this to switch my different inputs. So this gives you a nice top-down view of the control surface. So here we have the blue pill. Um, we'll be getting this set up for NAB. So this is a small, small form factor PoE powered device, which will unify these into a single um, controller. Right now, this is a, a rack uh, that is just kind of holding each one of these in place. And each of these in a, is an individual module. And the blue pill will allow us to create a single module. So if I press a button over here, it's affecting something over there. So down the front here, we have the Densitron touchscreen. We have XTV running. Uh, we've got the 1U, which is running XTV and DLG. We have got the PoE, um, the uh, the PoE Texas 16 port router. And then we've got the LPU uh, three down here, which is what is basically bringing the entire production together. Then we also have in the back, uh, Aximetry, which is um, that the 3D software. And I'm just gonna bring that up on the big screen and... It'll be a lot easier once, uh... let's see. So, uh, virtual production generally isn't done in such a small space. Uh, ideally, we'd be working with a much larger studio area and the LED wall would be, in fact, quite a bit larger. We only have a 10 by 10 booth, so this camera is actually too close uh, to us. 
uh, ideally there'd be a greater depth of field. And what that does is that helps um, adjust for things like moray issues. But in this case, we're just trying to show the principle of it where we have axisymmetry feeding um, the LED wall and then we've got the bowl in BC9 with that nice one inch sensor uh, coming into BMEX and actually doing that composite. So at least it gets you a little bit of an idea if you can imagine this LED wall going in all different directions. It's almost acting like a green screen except for there's no keying involved and there's a couple of important aspects of why that makes this great. Um, the other thing I want to show, there we go. So I talked a little bit about the camera tracking. Uh, we have this camera over here running on the uh, Polymotion Chat Pro and it is essentially, it's just following me around re regardless of whether I want to or not. It's actually sending this uh, NDI signal into the LPU3 and then it's sending VISA commands to the camera over there. And I can basically, you know, I can make it do whatever I want. If I duck, it's going to reset. Or once it reacquires me, it's going to follow me around again. This is great for automating live production workflows. And we have got a lot of that going on in the booth, but this is kind of a key uh, piece of making that whole thing work together. So XTV is uh, a play out uh, platform and it has an entire suite of not just play out, but also ingest. It is capable of running a 24 seven channel in a box, which is perfect for cable TV or satellite channels or newsrooms. Um, we're running it at HD, but it can be operated as an SDI or 4K or even 8K uh, production. And we can use it as either a, uh, we can output via NDI like we are here. It can be used in a, uh, as an ingest and trimming, and it can be outputted via uh, SDI or NDI. Sorry about that. And it's capable of being used in a lot of different ways uh, for live production. As we can see here, I've scheduled up some demos of uh, the Scarhoy. Basically, I just loaded all of our, our demo clips in there, but this is playing 24 seven and it's capable of receiving signals for if you need to do um, emergency action system or you need to trigger to go to a live studio so you can have a house of worship that does 23 hours of pre-programmed content and then one hour of live content. So there's a lot of different features that are built into XTV that make it the perfect channel in a box and we integrate that into the Switchblade platforms and I'll kind of give you a whole um, software overview here shortly. Actually, I should do that, I think, uh, now. So I'm going to pop back and share my screen. NDI products. So with the NDI products, there's a, there's a lot of them. I mean, every, every, almost everything that we've talked about here is NDI capable, whether it's vMix or PTZ cameras. But in terms of strict ingest, uh, there's five that I wanted to point out. So RGB Link have the Tau 1 Pro, and this is actually a touchscreen switch switcher. Why am I bringing it up here is because at the price that it's at of $500 is it makes for a perfect NDI encoder. It is an NDI 5 capable platform, and it can output either your USB or HDMI sources to NDI, and you can switch between them. Or it can act as a touchscreen switcher, so you can output to HDMI or RTMP. So it's a versatile little device at a price of an NDI encoder. PTZ Cam has the ProEnc 1 and ProEnc 3. Uh, the ProEnc 1 is a um, HDMI and USB to NDI HX encoder. The ProEnc 3 is SDI, HDMI, and USB all at the same time to NDI or SRT, and it has a built-in decoder, making it a bi-directional SRT encoder decoder uh, platform. Science Image is a full NDI uh, encoder, and they have two models that we stock, which are the NDI HD Mini and the 4K.SH. And these have both SDI and HDMI on them. The difference is, is that the HD mini is 4K, uh, is HD 1080p 60. The 4K.SH is um, 4K p 60. So it's got 12G SDI and 4K um, HDMI on it. And it is both an encoder and a decoder, making it a Swiss army knife. Essentially, a, 
how it compares against other full NDI encoders is you can get this product for almost essentially the same cost, but you get SDI and HDMI in the same unit, which is perfect for people that don't know that they're always going to need one or the other. If somebody is using this as a capture tool for cameras, it's nice to be able to, you know, throw either HDMI or SDI in it. Here at the booth, uh, we are using the SDI on one of them to capture a PTZ camera, and we're using the HDMI on the other to capture the, the main camera shot because uh, we're using a DSLR for our, our wide shot. And then as a decoder, it can output to um, an SDI source, and it even makes for a nice transcoder because the 4K.sh will up or down convert the signal to whatever you need it to be, making it kind of like an accessory converter box as well. Switchblade Systems has um, an entire portfolio of products. Uh, starting from the left is the new Switchblade Splice S4 and H2. They are four inch square uh, live production systems with either four SDI or two HDMIs. Next in line is the Turbo and the Zephyr. These are our portables with integrated screens. The Turbo is the high-end product. It is basically going to be our platform for delivering 12G SDI live production, or um, it'll also be a, a platform for aximetry, uh, portable aximetry production. And then the Zephyr is a more cost-effective uh, unit, but it has some extra features uh, by default in it, namely that it's got a built-in control surface and it has that balanced audio by default. The M9 is also a pretty new product uh, that's uh, over, our, over my shoulder here. And the M9 is uh, the sequel to the M7. It's a slightly bigger box and it has by default a carry handle on it, making it another portable to bring to events. It's easy to, to carry around. It is still pretty small form factor and it is uh, capable of having four to eight uh, inputs on it and uh, optional analog and control surface. And then on the right, we have our rack mount options. Uh, anything from one to four U, there's different, a uh, lot of different options here depending on your needs. And then the Switchblade products uh, historically have just run vMix, but now they run an entire suite of software. Uh, vMix is for switching, streaming, and recording. Uh, Axle technology, which we went over a little bit, uh, has the XTV playout and ingest, DLG graphics for uh, live broadcast graphics for inserting data or lower thirds or crawls into your broadcast workflows. Multi cross convert is an IP conversion uh, application. So if you need to convert any form of IP video to any other form of IP video in a live production scenario, that can be all built into a turnkey uh, switchblade system. Uh, DJ Pro and VJ Pro are audio-based products for doing uh, radio production. So if you need to create your own radio station or visual radio, they've got applications for that. Axymetry, we went over a little bit. They've got the single and dual engine. Uh, single engine is basically their um, Axymetry's uh, integrated engine. And then dual engine, we have uh, the Unreal engine as well. I don't know if you've heard of it, but it's a very popular engine. There's a lot of content available for it. Uh, but it's for the Axymetry software we'll be making available as a turnkey live production uh, virtual set system that can output via SDI or NDI doing 3D virtual sets, either green screen or uh, virtual production. The reason why I bring in Yuan here, uh, Yuan is our uh, capture card vendor and they make, uh, they're the largest vendor of capture cards in the world, but they have given us uh, exclusively software for doing um, NDI, uh, their capture cards to NDI, making them an NDI ingest partner. So if you take one of their capture cards and run Stream Catcher Pro, say we put four, um, a four input card or two four input cards, you can easily make an eight input NDI capture device for a lot less than uh, what it would normally cost you to build a eight input, either to buy eight full NDI encoders or um, buy a turnkey uh, device that captures eight NDIs. Uh, it is also capable of doing layouts and being used as a webinar tool. So you can bring in say four SDI sources and create a um, 
one input for each and then a, a, a multi-view of all three sources and input that into Teams or Skype or Zoom or, or whatever because it appears like a, a web camera. So it's a, an easy way of converting your SDI or HDMI uh, infrastructure directly into Zoom. New Blue is uh, Titler Live does broadcast and data. So if you need to take sports scores or social media and convert it into an NDI source with graphics, New Blue is perfect for that. And we already went over the um, Mark Roberts motion control poly motion chat application, which is uh, for taking a, a PTZ camera and uh, automating it, which is really, I'm really looking forward to, to showing that off at the show. U.S. Broadcast is a PTZ powerhouse. We have a wide range of PTZ solutions, starting with Bolin technology on the left here. Bolin's flagship BC9 has a one inch sensor that rivals uh, other brands that have large sensor uh, solutions at a much more competitive price point. It's available in HD and 4K. Uh, Another interesting note is that Bolin has outdoor cameras that are broadcast quality, and it's easy to find an outdoor PTZ camera, and there are certainly a, a variety of broadcast cameras out there, but outdoor broadcast cameras are pretty hard to come by. So the Bolin SD530, um, SD500 series are capable of being integrated into any outdoor scenario, whether it's a stadium or an arena or any kind of uh, any kind of venue where you want those cameras to be rained on. Scarhoy that we've went over a little bit, uh, and they offer obviously switching and uh, camera shading. But one of my favorite applications and what we're using here today to control our PTZ cameras. Um, our Scarhoy's PTZ line. I'm using the PTZ module on the Mega Panel, but it is essentially just a smaller version of a PTZ Pro. They have everything from teeny tiny PTZ Wiz up to the PTZ Extreme. So any size PTZ controller is capable of controlling a wide range of PTZ cameras and at the same time can be sending commands to your router. So I'll give you an example. If you wanted to have a PTZ Pro controlling a Panasonic and a NewTek camera, both of which would speak very different protocols, and send a command to your Blackmagic Video Hub to put that camera onto the screen that you're using to monitor that camera. This is the kind of powerful workflow that Scarhoy enables above and beyond uh, traditional uh, PTZ control surfaces. Next, we have PTZ cam small, medium, and large. Uh, the USB Pro is just a tiny little uh, US, uh, fairly inexpensive USB camera controllable from vMix. Um, doesn't have HDMI or SDI or NDI. Uh, it just comes in as a UVC device. <clears throat> the UV510A uh, is, is a, a staple product of uh, PTZ Cam. Uh, I think it, it might have even be what they named their, uh, their product, uh, their brand after. So the PTZ uh, Cam UV510A does NDI, SDI, and HDMI. And there's a very popular bundle. If you buy three cameras, you get that controller on the right free. And we did go over a little bit earlier the UV401 4K NDI HDMI PoE powered um, PTZ camera, which is available soon. <clears throat> this is our virtual production workflow. So we have uh, the Sansi LED walls, which are behind me, Aximetry, which we've touched base on, and Cedar, uh, which make tracking heads, um, which are capable of feeding the Aximetry software the camera's position data so that you can get real-time motion tracking mechanically through their cranes and um, PTZ and uh, tripod heads. We have a wide range of other products on the booth uh, that we'd love to show you and uh, to just give you a quick overview of them. Um, AV Matrix and Lilliput are uh, They've got switchers and converters. We also are using uh, Lilliput monitors on, on the booth and we carry some of them in stock. Uh, when we bundle our um, batteries with either the Vaxxis wireless or the Tau One Pro, um, we get those from Lith. They do batteries and lighting. We have free bundles of um, NPF 970 style uh, batteries. So they're Sony NPF style batteries 
that uh, plug into the Tau One Pro and the uh, Atom 500. Vaxxis uh, does wireless products. We have a pretty large number of the Atom 500 in stock. They are reliable and cost-effective 500-foot SDI and HDMI wireless transmitter, and they compete very well against other low-cost wireless transmitters on the market. But Vaxxis also makes the Storm 1000 and 3000 products. Genius Sports, which you may know previously as Sportscast. Uh, Sportscast um, made a product called the Score Hub and the ScoreLink. The ScoreLink is a product that takes scoreboard data and converts it into XML. And you can use that to create um, real-time scores and 3D graphics automated uh, in your production workflow. PoE Texas, we are using on the booth as a 16-port uh, PoE switch, and we have uh, not just the switches, but also there's an entire line of accessories. Um, over on the pedestal over there, I'm using their wall plate, which does uh, takes a single PoE um, cable and turns it into four PoE sources, so you can wire up a conference room with PoE. They can convert, uh, they have a number of injectors and um, switches and even PoE lighting, which is something that most people don't know about. You can actually make lights that are powered from a network switch and create an entire commercial automated uh, workflow with that. Densitron, which we have over the shoulder, I'm gonna touch base on that uh, shortly. Densitron automation. Um, is capable of automating the entire studio. We have it controlling both vMix and our PTZ cameras, as well as DMX lighting. RGB Link makes that Tau One uh, that I talked about earlier, that touchscreen um, RTMP slash NDI encoder. But they also have a bonding product, which is called the Bond 6, which acts sort of like a five USB plus um, RJ45 bonding unit for field production. Dataton make media servers, and uh, to explain that a little bit, the media server market is for event production, and event production, if you're driving, say, a dozen screens, and you wanna stretch uh, a single animated video across all of them, but not the same video, and you want to automate that and um, have it all in the highest quality, a media server is basically something that plays back at an extremely high resolution, high quality file and outputs it to multiple um, multiple computers, driving multiple screens all in concert together. And they also do uh, projection mapping. So when you see a building wrapped in a single projection, that's done with Dataton. And then we have Kiloview who are making NDI and SRT encoders. Uh, of note is the um, 1U and 3U rack mount modular encoder decoder. So if you need to encode um, a number of sources from SDI to NDI or have a SRT decode return, that is a perfect product for that. So you can see on the, the big screen over here that I am cutting back and forth between my sources. So I can select whatever is in preview. So I can put, well, actually that's, that's on program because uh, that's my overlay. Um, I can select what I want in preview and then I can cut to it. So if I wanna go to my shot of my bowling, I can control anything that I want from this. Now, this is a custom interface and we can use it to control a power strip or we also had the uh, lighting set up for a while so we can control the lighting from three fixtures. So you can walk into your studio in the morning fire off your PTZ presets, adjust the elevation of your autopod, and do a, a variety of different um, pre-configuration tasks. The other thing that I wanna walk you through is a couple of uh, units in particular. I have a, a document camera here, which I'm going to just uh, switch to and give you a little show and tell, um, because there's a couple of things that I think I'd like to focus on more specifically. And that is this shot, so you can see um, sometime between now and NAB, we need to get the Kaya cameras off the ground. Uh, these are our HD and 4K POV cameras. These are small form factor, rugged. This is a solid metal chassis uh, with a small SDI connector on it. 
and this can um, obviously fit in very small places and it's got a variety of mounting uh, and it takes a CS mount lens to it. And um, if I pull up input four real quick, you can see the one that's mounted on our booth here. So this is our 4K unit. Uh, so that's Kaya. We also have, I just want to show you, this is that switchblade splice. So this is the two HDMI model. It's got uh, two HDMI ins, two HDMI outs, one for US, uh, one for the UI, one for say a projector. It's got a 2.5 uh, gig network connection on it. And then it's got um, two display ports. So small form factor, you can literally fit it, a switcher in the palm of your hand. This is also available in a 4SDI version. <clears throat> if you want to see how small um, the Vaxxis Atom 500 is, this is an SDI and HDMI input, comes as a pair. It's got integrated antennas, takes that NPF style battery that I was uh, mentioning, and it's basically a dollar a foot. $500 gets you 500 feet. The PTZ Cam Pro Ank 1 uh, is HDMI in with loop through with dedicated audio, um, separate audio input. It also has a USB input if you wanted to convert an NDA, um, a webcam, either a PDZ webcam or just a regular webcam, webcam to NDI or SRT. Perfect little device for that, very cost effective. It's bigger brother. The Pro Ink uh, 3 doesn't even fit on the screen. Um, there we go. <clears throat> So the Pro Ank 3 has uh, SDI in and loop through, HDMI in and loop through, and USB in. This output can also be a decoder, so we can decode off, crying out loud. <clears throat> Just can't win today. How about now? All I need to do is reset it. I don't know why it keeps losing it. Frickin' zoom. Okay, I'm gonna pretend like you can all hear me. And I'm gonna pretend like nothing happened. Uh, so the Pro Ank 3 is a uh, three input model. Well, here, let me just back up one. This is the Pro Ank 1, uh, and it is capable of bringing in HDMI or USB to NDI or SRT. So it's a nice small form factor encoder, has a nice LCD screen on the, the front with touchscreen buttons to automate what it's doing. And it also has a dedicated audio input. So you can, if your audio is not coming in via HDMI, it's coming in say from a mixer, you can do that separately, which is a really nice feature. The Pro Ank 3 is SDI in and out, HDMI in and out, and USB, and it will do all three of those to NDI or SRT or RTMP simultaneously, giving you a wide range of connectivity and functionality. If you need to send this off and capture a bunch of different sources to SRT to send back to vMix and send a return SRT feed, you can decode it from the SRT out. So this output can be either an NDI HX decode or an SRT or RTMP or any any kind of IP out. It will even do a multi-view um, so you can monitor all of your sources plus your IP decode, making it a really powerful option. And then I figured I'd give you a close-up of the, um, this is the science image 4K.sh and it has uh, fiber. So this is, uh, this is an SFP port. So we can put fiber or we can put 10 gig copper. Um, this is HDMI in and loop through, 12G uh, SDI in and loop through, and then regular um, regular RJ45 port. This is a 12 volt accessory plug, and then this is uh, audio in and out, and then this is a uh, USB port for, uh, they offer the ability to convert USB to um, serial if you wanna control a serial PTZ camera. So that is um, actually longer than I intended to take. So uh, I had hoped to keep this to 30 minutes, but as you can see, we have a lot of products in the booth and we've really only scratched the surface of each of these. So my hope is, is that this generates a desire in you to go to NAB and come by the booth and actually see it and poke it and touch all of the things that I've just showed you, whether it's PTZ automation or, a variety of NDI uh, devices, 
PTZ control, this beautiful control surface here. Uh, it really helps to get hands-on with these things. But if you can't come to NAB uh, and you have further questions, you can drop them in chat or you can follow up with us uh, online. So uh, with that, uh, I'm just gonna open it up to questions for a moment and then close the webinar. So um, I wanna thank you all for joining us on the webinar and I hope to see you at NAB. Uh, We've got a lot to show you and we're looking forward to getting back in the saddle. And tomorrow we are tearing the booth down and heading off to our first trade show in Providence, Rhode Island. So um, we'll be doing Alliance for Community Media, which is a, uh, a cable access um, trade show as sort of a warm up for doing NAB. And once we get over that, kind of rip the bandaid off and get back to doing trade shows, we will be heading off to Las Vegas and if you aren't going to NAB, but you are going to Infocom, we'll be there as well. So we have booths at um, ACM, NAB. Between NAB and Infocom, we'll be doing Streaming Media East in Boston. Then we'll be doing Infocom, and then we're heading down to Atlanta for the Capture Summit, which is a House of Worship uh, event going on down there. And that is our beginning, uh, that's, our, that's our Q2 trade show schedule. It looks like um, they're doing NAB New York this year. We have no idea how that's going to go, but uh, chances are we're going to end up there as well. That'll probably be in October. Um, IBC will be on again this year uh, in September. We'll probably not have a booth, but if you're planning to go to IBC, we can certainly uh, hang out and have a, a Stroop waffle or a beer or something else. So. I'm going to close the webinar now. Thanks for joining us. If you have any other questions, feel free to follow up with Aaron or I after the webinar. Thanks for watching. Thank